and then we're done with new material for the end, for the entire semester. Yeah. Let's have a cheer for that. That is awesome. Some people are not happy. Okay. Here we go. It's Monday. I know. We all wish we were on the weekends. <clears throat> Let's take a trip back to like third grade. I think that's when you learn long division. So, everybody look at this problem. And... Raise your hand. Everybody look at this. Aiden, stop talking. Everybody look at the problem that's on the board. 520 divided by 3. Raise your hand if you can. Well, actually, let's do the clap. If you can tell me what the first step is. Okay. Now somebody tell me what the first step is. Samantha. Okay, good. Everybody give it up for Samantha. Yay. We're going to go through this in, in, in painful detail. Okay, you all learned this like six or seven years ago. So, because the process that we're going to follow today is very, very similar. Actually, it's exactly the same. A little bit different, but exactly the same as far as the process goes. Okay, so three, what do we do with those numbers? So she said we look at three and five and do something with them. What do we do with them? Tyler. See how many times three goes into five. Good. How many times does three go into five? Once. Everybody give it up for Tyler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I have that. What do I do? What do I do? I have a three that's circled, a five that's circled, and a one up here. What's what's next? Desi? So you put one into three and you put three into five and one. Good. All right. Everybody give it up for Desi. Woo! So when we subtract, everybody shout it out. What is 5 minus 3? 2. 2. Two. Good. Okay. Now what? Thane? You carry down the 2. So you, that's actually a five. Good. Carry down the 2. Everybody give it up for Thane. Yeah. Then what? Zach? Uh, we see how many times the 3 goes into 22. Who is talking? Me. Asa <laughs> <laughs> Okay, nobody except for, let's put it this way, nobody except for Zach should be talking right now, okay? I'm hearing chatter over here, that's why I was... Okay. Okay, so he started to say, before I, along with everybody over here, interrupted him, that... Um, we put three, see how many times three goes into 22? Good. How many times does it go into 22? Uh, goes in there like, um, seven times. Cool, everybody give it up for Zach. Yeah! Okay. Good. Now what? Tyler. Multiply seven times three and then twenty-one. Seven times three is twenty-one, and then subtract. Everybody give it up for Tyler. Yeah. Okay. Let's just do this real fast. Two, twenty-two minus twenty-one is one, and then we bring down the zero. Three goes into ten. I'm gonna put this up here again. Three goes into ten. How many times? Three. Three times. So we put a three up here. Three times three is nine, and then we subtract to get ten minus nine is. One. Okay. Now, do you guys remember? Remember this? Remember what? R1. You guys yeah. remember the R? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, does anybody remember another thing that you could have done differently? You, you learned the R1 thing at the very beginning, but beyond that, there was something else that you did. Liz? Yeah? What was on top of the three? straight line. Okay, I have a straight line. Then what do I do? Oh. Okay. That's good. You were, you were on the right track. Um, Shuggy? Oh, I see. Okay. So that's that what you're talking about. Now I get what you get. So that is you add some decimals and a zero and you put the three 
and a three with a bar on top of yeah. it. That's good. The decimal version. Excellent. We're not going to use the decimal version this time because yes. we don't have decimals. So, fraction, people. People who like fractions. Vanessa. So, you write like the one. Good. Yep. Good. One over three. Everybody give it up for Vanessa. Yeah. Let's just, let's just put, let's put that. Okay. So the remainder is what goes on the top of the fraction and the dividend. So this number is what goes on the bottom of the fraction. And that is your answer. Okay. Keep that process in your head because we're going to focus on this a lot today, but with polynomials instead of numbers. Okay. So here we go. Ready? Okay. Oh my. That's unfortunate. Okay, here we go. Now, let me really quickly put up two separate problems because even though they look kind of similar, they actually are done quite differently. So the first one, we actually do not have to use that long division process with every single polynomial division problem. Dividing. Yeah, dividing. Okay. So what we have in this first one is x cubed plus 16x squared plus 6x divide all divided by 2x. So what we have on the right hand side, what it's being divided by is a monomial. Okay, monomial meaning one term. When you have something being divided by a monomial, in this problem, you do not, do not use long division like we did in our warm up problem. Okay, whoop, let's move that over a little bit. But does everybody see how in this next one, we've got x squared, sorry, 2x squared plus 3x plus 5 divided by x plus 1. And now we have not a monomial, but a binomial, two terms. This is where when you're dividing by a binomial, now you want to use long division, okay? Go like that. We're going to focus our lesson today quite a bit on the long division stuff, but I don't want you to forget about this other way, which we'll do in just a second. What's up, Vanessa? Well, not necessarily. I can put this in parentheses too. It's that this is one term. This one has two terms. X is one of the terms okay. and one is a different one. This is just one term by itself. Okay, that's a good question. Everybody, questions, other questions? Okay, so let's do this one first. Whoops, let me put this back. I'll probably forget to do it. Okay, here we go. Do not use long division. So how do we do it if we're not using long division? It's super easy. We're actually going to take each of these individual terms and we're going to divide them individually by what we're supposed to be dividing by. So we're going to take x cubed and divide it by 2x. Then we're going to take the plus 16x squared and also divide that by 2x. And we're going to take the 6x, we're also going to divide that by 2x. It's not really dividing as much as uh, simplifying. So can anybody, so we're individually looking at these. How many people could tell me what 6x divided by 2x is? Brandon, what is it? Three. Cool. Everybody give it up for Brandon. Okay. Now let's look at, I'm going backwards because I think they, they're easier toward the end. 16x squared divided by 2x. What does that reduce down to? Cole. 8x. Everybody give it up for Cole. Yeah. Cole or 8x. Okay. Next. Okay. Now, this last one, or last slash first, x cubed over 2x. What does that reduce to? Zach? x squared. On the top and what on the bottom? Cool. Everybody give it up for Zach. That's super easy, right? So, whenever you see being divided by a monomial, don't overcomplicate. You just literally take each individual term and divide it by what it's supposed to be divided by. Okay, questions? Now let's go back to long division. Okay, here we go. I'm going to bring our, um, our example from the very beginning up so you guys have a reference point here Ooh, as best as possible. Here we go. Can you see that kind of? All right, where did we start? I'm going to try and do this side by side as much as I possibly can. In our problem over here, somebody remind me what I started with. Zach? Uh, you started by seeing how many times that you can convert the number into the last number. Mm -hmm. um, if, if the dividend goes into the five. Good. We figured out how many. 
many times does three evenly go into five? The only difference with this type of problem, now we have two terms on the outside and a bunch of things on the inside. So we're always going to compare the first terms that we're left with, okay? So in other words, everybody give it up for Zach first. <laughs> We've got to give our props. Okay, now everybody think, what do we have to multiply x by to get 2x squared? Tyler? 2x, and that's what goes on top. Everybody give it up for Tyler. Okay, so what do we do? Again, if I'm referring back to this, we have the 3, the 5, and the 1. In this one, it's x, 2x, and 2x. What do I, what do I do with, what did I do with that? We did something with the 3 and the 1 to get a number, whoops, to get a number down here. What did we do, Vanessa? You multiply them. Everybody give it up for Vanessa. Okay, so this time we only had one number to multiply by one number. This time we've got two things to be multiplied by this one. So we're going to get two things down here. Okay, so we get x times 2x is what? 2x squared. 1 times 2x is 2x. Questions on that? Yes. Okay, so... We all agree in this other problem, 3 times 1 is 3, right? Okay, we only had one number to multiply by one number. We had one number on the outside of the division sign. Over here we have an x and we have a positive 1. Both to be multiplied or distributed, you can say, to the 2x that's up here. Okay, so 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. Questions? Let me go back and do it again. Everybody watch. x times 2x is 2x squared. 1 times 2x is 2x. Sloan. So are we We're about to eat the subtraction part. Yeah, we're about to get there. So there's a trick to this. Um, now, we, like Sloan was just saying, the next thing we did over here was we subtracted, right? So if we're following that same process, we are subtracting, sorry about that, we are subtracting both of these terms from the ones above it. So we have to distribute that subtraction sign to both terms. What happens when you distribute a negative to things? What happens to the signs? They switch. So a positive becomes a negative, so negative times 2x squared is negative 2x squared, and a negative times a 2x is a negative 2x. Okay, so 2x squared minus 2x squared, what happens to those? They cancel. 3x minus 2x is x. Okay, what did we do here? We had 5 minus 3 was 2, and then we did something else. What did we do? Tyler? Brought down the, sign. Brought down the brought 2. Down the and, right, brought down the 2, and in this case, we're going to bring down a plus 5, okay? So now that we have our two numbers here, and we look to see how much does 3 go into 22 evenly, we're now, again, we're only looking at the first terms. So everybody should be looking at, what do I have to multiply x by to get x? So you guys tell me, what do I have to multiply x by to get x? 1, so it's a plus 1. Okay, well, anyone have any idea about what we can do next? So we have this plus one, it's the same thing as having this seven up here. We had three times seven was 21. So we do something with this and that to get something down here. Zach? Good, where did you, so the x plus one is down here is what you're saying? Yeah. Where did you get that? You're exactly right. Um, I got that from the Good, so x times one is x, one times one is one. And then he said, okay, everybody give it up for Zach and Tyler. I don't know if we do Tyler either. Okay, um, we subtract them both, which means we do what to the signs of both of them? We do the signs of x and 1. Good, so we subtract, subtract. Everybody give it up for Zach again. Okay, what happens to the x minus x? x minus x is? Nothing. And 5 minus 1 is 
four. Okay. So now we're at the remainder part. Who can tell me? It's we have two x plus one. Our remainder is four. Can somebody tell me what they think the remainder should look like in this? Taylor? So look at in this last one, remember it was this the remainder over the dividend. So what do you think? Good. It's a positive 4, so it's plus 4 over and then x plus 1. So that's what our overall answer is. Everybody give it up for Taylor. Yeah. Okay, let me stop there and ask if you all have questions. Yes, Shuggy. We're, gonna, we're about to go through another one. Yeah, so we're going to go through one where we have more more things to get more steps. Let's do that. Let's just go through another one. And then, okay, this one has more steps involved. Um, there, possibly. We'll see how you all can do here. Okay, so this one is x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x squared plus 2x plus 1 all divided by x plus 1. All right, somebody start me out. What is the very first step? Does it help to have our initial example up here or not really? Yes. Yeah? Okay. All right, I can put this off the page to start. Okay, so what was the very first thing we did again? Cole? Good. X times what, Cole, will give us X to the fourth? X to the third power. Cool. Everybody give Cole a round of applause. All right. So then what? Again, we got three times one is three down here. <clears throat> Zach? X to the fourth. X to the, good. X times X cubed is X to the fourth. 1 times x cubed is x cubed. We always want to make sure we multiply both of these. Both of these terms should be getting multiplied by this term to get the two terms down here. Now that we have something down here, we do what with it? What do we do with the 3 from the 5? Okay, Zach? We subtract. So since we have two terms here, subtracting means we do what to the signs of each of them? Flip them. So they're both positive, so now they both become minuses. Okay? Then what? Let's say this. If you feel like you have this down, I hope people who are feeling like they understand this are doing this on their own and comparing their answer with ours at the end. Okay? Cole? Yes. Um, what you're doing is you're taking... Think of uh, distri distributing that x to... The whatever's on top to both of these terms to get what's down here. So x cubed times x is x to the fourth. x cubed times 1 is x cubed. Make sense? And then the negatives? And the negatives because um, over here what we subtracted, right? Okay, so it started out as a positive 3, but we're subtracting it. Okay, so then what happens to the x to the fourths? Aiden? Okay, and then x cubed minus x cubed. They cancel also. Okay, that's okay. If they both cancel, about, it makes our lives a lot easier, actually. What, um, what do we do after we subtracted over here? Uh, Aiden? Okay, our new answer, which is nothing at this point. Um, what did we do with this? Brought it down. So what are we going to bring down in this next problem? The x squared. Okay, good. So now we go back and we say, okay, what do we multiply x by to get x squared? So you guys tell me, what do I multiply x by to get x squared? X. Okay, so again, we need to have two things down here because we're distributing this x to both of the x and the 1 on the outside of the division sign. So x times x is what again? x squared? x times 1 is? What's it? x. Good. Okay, notice how we have two things down here, but only one. Anybody have any idea about what we can do to get another thing to combine with this? Zach, go ahead. 
Okay, Aiden? Good, bring down another term. Bring down that 2x as well. Okay, how are we doing on questions, you guys? Okay. Now what? Are there questions? Let me make sure there are no questions before we go. Aiden? We subtract. Excellent. Subtract. Subtract. Go ahead. Good. 2x minus x is how many x's? X. Good. And then bring down the 1. Excellent. Give it up for Aiden. Okay. okay. Now we look and see how many times do we have to multiply x to get x. 1 plus 1. Okay. What two things am I supposed to have down here now? And how do I get them? I'm supposed to have two things under here to combine with the two things that I just put there. Zach? Good. How did you get x plus 1? Okay. We, the, okay, good. There's a way that we actually get that, though. It has to do with this and these two. You, you tell me, what is 1 times x? Okay. And what is 1 times 1? One? 1. That's why we're multiplying both of these by this to get these. Okay? Okay, good. Everybody give it up for Zach. Okay, what do I do with both those terms? Subtract. Okay, those cancel. What happened to the one? Cancel. So do we have a remainder in this one? No. No, so our answer is x cubed plus x plus one. All right. How are we doing? Good. Is it getting better? Now that we're getting some practice? All right. I'm going to show you all one last problem because there is one small difference with it, okay? I'm going to let you guys decide whether you want to continue to go through the whole thing or not, but, but we need to make sure that uh, we all are understanding this because you, you do see this in the future. Okay, so we have 9y to the fourth plus 14y squared. Yes, I meant to put a humongous space there, and I will go through y in just a second. So... 9y to the 4th plus 14y squared minus 8. Okay, there are huge spaces in between some of these terms. Does anybody have any idea why I put humongous spaces in there? Samantha? Okay, good, perfect. What does that mean exactly? But you're right. Good. Everybody give it up for Samantha, and then I'm going to repeat it right back. Okay. So in this last problem, we had x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, 2x to the invisible one, and then a zero at the end. We went down chronolog not chronologically, numerically by one each time. We are jumping here from y to the fourth to y squared. We don't have a y third. We need to put a zero y to the third in as exactly what Samantha said, a placeholder. Because, let's, let's just, let's pretend that that didn't exist and go about the problem in the way that we started it out. 3y goes into 9y to the fourth. What do I multiply 3y by to get 9y to the fourth? Aiden? 3y to the how many? Good, 3y to the third. Everybody give it up for Aiden. Okay, so then again, we want to distribute that. We want to distribute that to both of the terms on the outside, so we get two terms underneath here. So 3y cubed times 3y is 9y to the fourth. 2 times 3y is 6y cubed. Now, if we did not have that in there, let me go on the other side here. If we didn't have that y cubed in there, we would be trying to combine a y squared with a y cubed, but they're not like terms. You can't combine them. Does that make sense? That's why you need to put that in there. So can somebody tell me what they think goes in between the 14y squared and the negative 8? Shuggy? Oh. Okay. 
For the ones where the exponents jump from, let's say the exponent jumps from a 5 to a 3 or something, you have to put in a 0 y to the 4th. Sometimes it'll work like that. Sometimes it will and sometimes it will not. Basically, if you um, if your exponents of the thing that you're dividing by go down by 1, your exponents of the thing that you are dividing into also have to go down by 1. They have to match. Does that make sense? Like on number 14, um, all of the exponents skip by 2, right? Okay both in the thing that's being divided and the thing that's divided by. So that's why that one works. But in this one, we have um, them going down by 1 and going down by 2. Okay? Good question. Okay, other questions and comments? Yeah, Zay, or, I almost said Zay. How about Bane? Or Willie? Are we going by Willie now? I don't know. I that, go ahead. Okay. Good, plus zero y. How many other people were thinking that as well? Good, okay. Now, let's continue on with where we were. What do I do with um, the 9y to the 4th and the 6y cubed? Cancel what out? 9y to the 4th, okay, so we're subtracting from what's above. So these cancel out. Zero y cubed minus 6y cubed is how many y cubed? Negative 6y cubed, and then I bring down the 14y squared. Do we want to continue on with this? Let me continue. Okay, let's say this. If you understand it and you're good to go, just start your homework. I'm going to run through the very end of this problem really fast, um, just so that we all can see it if we need to. Okay, then from here we do, what do I have to multiply 3y by to get negative 6y cubed? 3y times negative 2y squared will give me negative 6y cubed. 2 times negative 2y squared is negative 4y squared, not to the fourth. Okay, so now, again, we're subtracting. Subtracting means distributing a negative. These are already negative. So when you distribute a negative to a negative, it becomes a positive. That's something that is really confusing for some people. Okay, because it, you feel like it should be a minus because you're subtracting but you're subtracting whatever already exists. So subtracting a negative and a negative make a positive. All right, so those cancel out. 14y squared plus 4y squared is 18y squared. Bring down the 0y. I lost my cap. Nope, there it is. Okay, so again, what do we have to multiply 3y by to get 18y squared? 6y, 3y times 6y is 18y squared. Uh, 2 times 6y is 12y, and then we're going to subtract, so signs change, subtract, subtract, those cancel out, 0 minus 12 is negative 12, lost you, that's still okay, bring down this minus 8, okay, and then very last piece, what do we have to multiply 3y by to get negative 12y, we have to multiply by negative 4, excellent, 3y times negative 4 is negative 12y, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Okay, and then we subtract, which means, right, we're subtracting negative. So negative times a negative is a positive on both of them. 12 y's cancel out, 8's cancel out, and so our answer ends up being all of that. Okay, questions? Okay, we are finito. Shuggy, question. Yes. saying what you are, then no. All right. The lesson is over. Let's hear a round of applause for that. Woo! Yay. Okay.